Hi, hello, welcome. Long time no chat in this position, which is super random to say like, I, I, <laughs> I never film here because I've got you on my bookshelf and in an ideal world, I'd be sitting in front of the bookshelf and you'd be seeing it, but we can't do that in that appointment. So we're working with what we've got and we're just going to sit here where I haven't sat since the book unwrapping videos of Vlogmas 2023 when I got a book calendar and this is all like it's all interlinked I promise so just just wait up it's gonna it's gonna go well but hi hello my name is Michaela I am a PhD student in Germany but I'm originally from New Zealand and my husband and I moved to Germany in December of 2021 to do my PhD studies I am a literary historian if you didn't know that but I am super super into books and I tried to get into this whole like side of booktube way back in the day kind of at the beginning of my youtube channel and then I kind of conked out because I was a little bit worried that I don't know I just I don't read that fast at the moment because I'm having to read so much for university and I didn't have that many books at the time as well because we were trying not to buy any books because we didn't know how long we'd be in Germany for and then everything changed last year when Luke got me a book advent calendar for Christmas and for that I basically got 25 books for the whole of Christmas and I opened one every day and it was just it was just amazing and so that book calendar kind of jump-started my entrance back into booktube and with that as well I actually got my first ever new book if you can call it that normally i buy secondhand books and i'm not really that big on reading new releases partially because a lot of the stories that i'm reading at the moment aren't new releases like i only just finished the six of crows series and the shadow and bone series i reread harry potter two years ago and good girl's guide to murder like i know that it's relatively new in the grand scheme of things but I only started reading it after the third book came out and so it's all these things that are like I'm just behind old stuff I'm not somebody who is up to date and reading new stuff but last year I actually reread the Aragon series and also completed the Aragon series for the first time ever I had previously read the first three books and then I don't know what happened but I never read the fourth book I remember like bits and pieces of most of the third book and then I didn't really remember how the third book ended and then the fourth book I just didn't read and I don't know why I'd, I know he had it because my brother read it and he owned the whole series but I just never read it anyway last year when I was going through my whole audiobook phase because I was finding I was reading so much at university and I was getting really exhausted by just staring at either screens or just words on a page that I just felt like I couldn't read anymore and so I got into this audiobook phase and I reread the whole Aragon series and it was amazing it was just oh it was it made me cry at the end honestly I think because it's just been so many years of me thinking about that series and just not knowing how it ended to finally come to the ending was such like a, oh, I don't know, it was one of those things where it was like you almost don't want to finish it because you don't want to know how it ends. Anyway, it was a very fortunate timing because at the end of last year, the next book got released and Luke bought it for me for Christmas. I know it's not like the next book because technically the Inheritance series is complete. You can see them all on the back, but this is like the next book in the world that Paulini created and I am just like oh my gosh I'm so so excited to read this and I haven't read it yet it's actually already March this year that I haven't read it yet because I had so many books that I'd started or series that I'd started that I wanted to finish before I could dig my teeth into this because it's such a long book and I know that it's going to take me ages to read it because I just take a long time to read and so in saying all of that what I've wanted to do for the longest time on booktube is a reading vlog but I'm never reading like up and coming books or new releases and so I feel like doing a reading vlog of a book that came out years ago like I, I don't know it just feels kind of wrong or strange or I don't know 
but what I thought I could do is this is the first new release book that I will be reading and I thought that I'd take it as an opportunity to get into the book reading world. It is today the 5th of March and so we'll see how long this video takes me. I have no idea but I'm going to try and do as much as I can. I'm going to read and maybe either at the end of each chapter or at the end of each section, I don't know, I'm going to explain my thoughts and, and see how I'm going. I am going to say right now that there are going to be spoilers in this video and so if you don't want spoilers, you probably shouldn't watch this video, but if you do want spoilers, if you've read it, if you don't mind, like, come along for the journey. I'm so excited. It's going to be amazing. And hopefully, by the end of this video, I'll be finishing this in my new apartment because I'm moving in two weeks and I'm planning on setting up like a little reading nook because I don't have one here. And I'm hoping that I can have like a little chair, like sofa chair thing in front of a bookcase and it can be all like pretty and like reading and aesthetic and everything. So hopefully this video has a lot of changes, but either way, thank you for coming along. I hope that you enjoyed this video and let's start reading this book. It is the next day and I've started reading again. It's actually the end of the day and I've just showered and washed my hair so it's wet and looking ridiculous. But I'm in the same position as I was yesterday and I'm, I think I'm enjoying the book so far. I do have to say that the writing is very young adult and I think that's fine. Like I'm trying to get back into the mindset of what a young reader would want to read and yeah I think it's also strange being in Mertag's point of view rather than Aragon's because I think I got used to the way Aragon thought slash spoke or at least the way he was written and I felt like a lot of Paolini's way of writing how it changed throughout the years was reflected in Aragon growing up and becoming more mature and I felt like Paolini's writing was happening at the same time and so it's really strange to go to Murtag and feel like that has gone backwards but it might just be because Murtag is a different point of view and maybe he's trying to write him young because I feel like he's emotionally quite stunted because of what he's been through so I don't know I'm basically all that is to say is that I'm I feel like I'm getting used to the point of view but it's super interesting. We basically pick up, I think, a couple of months later. I'm assuming it's a couple of months later. He doesn't know that Aragorn's gone. Spoiler if you <laughs> haven't read the last one, but you should have if you're watching this video. He doesn't know that Aragorn's gone, or at least it doesn't seem like he knows. And he's basically looking for information on something. And so he has gone to Sionon. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm basically, I did the last few books as audiobooks. And so... I'm basically thinking of the pronunciations as how it was said in the audiobook. But basically he's looking for something. It seems like there is this like stones coming up that have some magical power and it's not a good thing. And so he's trying to figure out where they're located and where they're coming up and therefore why they're coming up. So he's gone to Sionon to meet with somebody and they ended up in a big brawl fight and the person died. He doesn't know how. And so he's now trying to escape but that's kind of all that's happened I know there's not much of an explanation but kind of my thoughts so far and yeah <laughs> Mustachioed? I've never heard this before. I thought you just said a musta mus mus mustached? Mustached? Mustached man. How do you spell it? 
Mustachioed. M-U-S-T-A-C-H-I-O-E-D. There's an I in there, apparently. Mustachioed? I haven't even heard that before. Are you googling it? There's another word called mustachian, but I think that's too something else. Wait, does it end O-E? I... Huh? Keep going. M-U-S-T. Mustachioed. Yeah. As in a mustache. What? Typically a long or elaborate one. Is it not a mustached man? A mustachioed Belgian sleuth. I am mustachioed. Well, there you go. I've learned a new word. Mustachioed. <laughs> obviously later now it's a few days later I don't actually remember the last time I filmed but I'm sitting down to read because I've had actually quite a productive day at work today and I just feel like doing something different and so I'm gonna read I actually realized I must be entering like a fantasy phase at the moment because last year it was all about like crime and thriller and like mystery books and now all I want to read is fantasy and it must be something to do with dragons as well because on audiobook I normally have like multiple books going at once. I've got like an audiobook, an ebook, and a like physical book. And the physical book I've got going at the moment is obviously Murtag. You're reading that with me. And the ebook I've got going is Fourth Wing. I'm gonna be honest, I always forget what it's called. I keep going to call it Iron Flame. But I think that's the second book. So I got that going. And then as an ebook, I've got a Brandon Sanderson book. So like it's just it's all fantasy at the moment, which is not bad. I'm very happy that I'm re-entering my fantasy phase. But just to talk about this book, I am 95 pages in. It's relatively big font. Um, I'm enjoying it so far actually. Murtag is on his way to Gilead. I was just, I was gonna say actually, and then I forgot to, but I'm enjoying that it's split up into, let me see if I can hold this up. It's split into like sections, and at the end of each section, it's kind of when he gets to a new big city. At least that's the trend so far. The first one was Sienon, this one's Gilead, and then it's got like lovely artwork. So I'm really enjoying that at the moment. I'm underlying quite a lot because I feel like every now and then there's just like a really good line and let me actually see if I can. So like the other day I underlined this, I think I, I filmed it, but I feel like the writing feels very young adult and that was one of my criticisms for when, when I was reading Aragon, was that you've got to go in knowing that it's very, very young adult and I think sometimes I forget that when I'm reading books. And I also really, really hate the, like, the fake British tone i don't know what it's called i know it's called some like anachronistic victorian or something where it's like how we imagine they would speak and so the overall tone of this book i'm not loving even though i'm loving like the actual concept of the book itself the tone itself i'm not loving but there are some really good lines throughout it and so for example murtag is talking with his dragon thorn about how he kind of wondering what it would be like if they'd had a different upbringing or like a different situation where they hadn't been under Galvatorix's power and rule and everything and that they'd been able to have the same education that Aragorn had had and everything and they were talking about what it would be like if they went and saw Glader who was the dragon that they slew but they also killed his rider as well and so they were talking about how it's probably not going to forgive him and Thorn basically says, like, it's fine, like, we're strong because of what we went through, no one else has survived what we have. But then Murtag responds with, and this is the, like, the line that I really like, but despite what Murtag had told Essie, he believed that some wounds, some scars, were too great to overcome and did nothing to make a person stronger. Quite the opposite. A truly severe injury only left you weakened, imperfect, and there was no fixing most of it. I feel like, oh, it's just such a good line because, I don't know, I feel like a lot of these books are like, oh, you can get better and like overcoming and a lot of Aragorn's story was like being healed and overcoming and like being 
better despite what happened um and i just felt like it was a very raw honest sentence so yeah no that was definitely a good sentence but murtag is currently in gilead he's looking for a specific person who has quite extensive spy network because he's again trying to figure out what the stone is and he also realized that there was an amulet that had been enchanted which like protected the wearer from all magic and so Murtag was trying to figure out like who had enchanted such a like powerful amulet and so he's trying to find this spy person to try and get answers to those two things so yeah I'm just gonna keep reading now and yeah I'm really enjoying it so far it's really nice to have like a different perspective but to be back in this world I feel like it's while I am quite critical of parts of it I feel like it's one of the first big fantasy series that I read growing up and so yeah it's kind of nostalgic to be back in it da, da, da. got my new little reading space I'm having a sick week at work so I thought I've been watching Grey's Anatomy all day and I feel like I just need a bit of a break so I'm gonna read for a bit because it's a pretty easy book to read but yeah I've just got my little up here. I'm gonna read for a bit and see how long I can. Hi. Um, oh my gosh, I sound sick. So I'm gonna keep this quick, but I'm reading the tag and I don't actually remember the last time I did an update, so I thought I would do that super quick before I keep reading. I'm really enjoying being back in the world, and it's really cool reading what feels so clearly Alligator. Like, I don't, I don't know if he's written any other series, but he writes this so well. And even though it's been a long time since he finished the Aragon series, it feels like you've just stepped back into the same world, which is really cool. And I think it just took me a while to get back into the feel of his writing, which is why I was so critical of it at the beginning. Like, it felt very, like, I don't know, young adult, but very young adult. And I don't think it, it's so much. I think it's just part of the way he's world building and the way people think and the way people act and stuff. Like, I think it's... It's either the way he writes or it's quite purposeful. Well, I was going to say these. <laughs> but it feels like it works, if that makes sense. So I'm getting used to it. But basically, he's gone to Gilead. I think that's the last thing I said was that he was on his way to Gilead. And he um, has gone to Gilead and he's met with a... He went to go meet with someone in the Queen's service who is like a secret keeper. So... They're in intelligence and they're very good at getting secrets and he knew her from before. And so he sent off what he thought was a coded message or whatever and it got intercepted by a weir cat. And so he got found by the weir cat and pulled in and she was basically like, if you're mentioning these kind of things, like, this has concern for me. And so they basically struck a deal where she had answers for him but in return she wanted something from him and so basically where cats have gone missing in the city and so she wanted him to find out who it was and save the one that had gone missing last who they think was still alive and so he had in order to do that he had to join the guard but in order to join the guard quickly he had to kill an enchanted fish that turns out had been enchanted by Durza in back in the day from er those are from the like the first book in the Aragon series and so this whole thing he ended up killing the fish and getting into the guard and I'm at the point where he's just done his like first full day in the guard and he's going to go find the weir cat now and yeah it's moving really slowly which is nice I think that was one of my criticisms for the writing but I think now that I'm back in the world like I'm this far through the book I think now that I'm back in the world and I'm back in like the way that he writes like he is just a very slow detailed writer in a young adult way and I think the only times that I've experienced this is in like I don't want to say adult fantasy but quite advanced fantasy there's a lot of 
detail in world building, like Brandon Sanderson and the Wheel of Time series, and so it's all quite a different feeling to this book, and so I'm suddenly, like, I'm getting used to the slowness of this book, and it's actually really nice, because it's making me feel like I'm a part of the world and stuff, so yeah, I am going to keep reading. I'm going to go blow my nose, but I'm going to keep reading, and yeah, I'll update you when something more has happened. funny thought today that I'd set a timer for an hour and just get some reading done and that was very optimistic it did not happen because my day got very busy very quickly but I'm gonna read now before I go to bed I'm still going with my attack I haven't explained where I'm up to but I will do so tomorrow and I'm saying this so that it happens It is 11.30, which is not ideal, but I thought that I might just read like a chapter of Murtak because I've had a pretty intense day with work. I have worked for eight and a half hours today. It's just, it's just been one of those days and I just feel like reading something kind of lighthearted and not very intense. And where I finished Murtak was on a cliffhanger and I still don't know, like, oh, it was such a big twist. That I just, I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know how he's going to, oh, I don't know. I don't know. So, I'm curious to see where this goes. And, yeah, I thought I might just read a chapter or two or something before bed. I've now actually downloaded the ebook for Murtag because I'm going away tomorrow. And I've got like a 11 hour travel day or something. And I've decided, not 11 hour, wow, that's super long, like 7 hour travel day. And I've decided that I can't bring the gigantic book with me. But I really, really want to finish it because I feel like it's it's dragging on, if that makes sense. Like I'm really enjoying it. But because I've been wanting to read the physical book and I haven't been taking that with me everywhere, I just haven't had a chance to just sit down and read, if that makes sense. So... I'm pretty much going to do that. I've got the ebook on my phone, on my Kindle app, um, and I thought that I'd finish that tomorrow. And then I have a four hour layover in Amsterdam airport tomorrow. And so I thought if I finish Murtag and I can like be done with it and feel happy about that, I might go book shopping. Hi. <laughs> It is the 8th of September, so it is, it's almost five months to the day since I started this book, because I started it on the 5th of March, and it's, it's been a while, it's been a while. I'm going to be honest, I had to look up my Goodreads review again for this book, because I finished this on, in July, I finished this in July, uh, on that trip which you saw in the last clip. I said that I downloaded the ebook so that I could read it on the plane and hopefully finish it in the airport and then buy a book. I didn't finish it in the airport. I didn't buy a book. I actually only finished it on the way back home after that trip. And I think because I read the last, like, I don't know, that much is when I bought the ebook because I'd read the last that much as an ebook and I read it so quickly after having read the rest of the book very slowly 
I didn't actually really remember what happened. And so I did have a quick flick through just now to figure out like what happened and I'm here to give my final review. This has been a long time coming. I, when I started this video saying, oh, I hope that I'll start this in my new apartment and I'll have a little reading nook and all this kind of stuff. I did start it in my new apartment. I did have a reading nook that you saw in one of the videos. I do have a bookshelf behind me now, but I did not expect it to be this long in finishing the book. So I think the last thing that I updated you on was him turning up to, uh, is it Bashel? That's how I've been pronouncing it. I realize there's actually a pronunciation guide at the end of this book, which I didn't realize while I was reading it. Does it actually have the names? Bashel. Yeah, okay, I had it right. So he turns up to Bashel, who is the witch who's been making those amulets that I was talking about and the stones and all of this kind of stuff. And the cliffhanger that I left you on was that she had called him her son. And I know the way that Paolini was setting it up was that this was actually going to be his mother, who's also Aragon's mother and long lost mother. Like we thought she was dead, but she's not kind of thing. It's not. I was caught in by the cliffhanger and she is not his mother, but she just calls everyone her children because her whole thing is that she is the, the leader of this new world and age and she's the speaker and um, she's the one that has connection to the creator of all things and blah blah blah. So that is where I left you off. After that, it's very, very, very slow. And a lot of things happen that I am quite surprised about in the sense that he turns up and he's like, look, we'll just stick around for like two days just to figure out what it is that she's doing and then we'll leave. Murtag and Thorn decide upon that. But then during that time, she puts them under a spell and they pretty much enter the same imprisonment that they had with Galvatorix. And it just, it shocked me because I know I guess what he was trying to do is create this cycle in Murtag's life, possibly, but it just didn't seem plausible, if that makes sense. Like, the reason he got caught by the spell is because he didn't fight as well as he could have, or as well as he was famed to fight. Which was weird, because all throughout the Aragon series, he was an insane swordsman and fighter and he had this strength and he had this agility and it seemed like in this book it just didn't exist anymore and so many things that shouldn't have happened did happen that it just didn't feel very believable anyway he ends up in this like fog servitude thing which he ends up breaking out of with the help of one of the servants and then leads this revolution against Bashel and then they have this whole face down and everything and he ends up I think I think he ends up killing her but almost killing himself in the process and then Thorn comes and saves him and he gets taken back to I want to call it what's the new name of it I don't know the the, the capital city where Nesuada is they changed the name of it but I can't remember I can't remember where it is anyway and then he has a reunion with Nesuada and she asks him to stay and yeah I know I'm going through this very quickly but I feel like it is emphasizing my opinions on the book, unfortunately. I really, really enjoyed being back in the world, but I still have a problem with the way that he is writing and I just don't love it. I was editing the beginning of this video and I realized that I kept saying read like a young adult book. And I realized that it didn't actually feel like it read like a young adult book. It read like a children's book. And I think that's why it was irking me so much because the language that he was using and like the fake British accent and everything, it's just, it just like irked me throughout it. And so I felt like it kept pulling me out of the storyline. But I loved the world building and I loved the characters and I loved where the plot went. It just felt too long for the lack of detail, if that makes sense. So while I loved the book, I do feel like I was never fully engaged in it, which probably didn't help that I was reading it so slowly. But at the same time, I read like the last quarter in four hours. It was very, very quick in comparison to the like three months that I'd spent on the previous part of the book. And I didn't really remember it much. And it didn't really feel like anything was super captivating or yeah, I don't know. It was a little tiny bit disappointing after how 
the fourth Aragon book ended, which I felt like was Paolini's culmination of his four books of writing. And I think he published the first book when he was 16 or something ridiculous. And so you really grew up with him as his writing style developed. And I felt like the fourth book of Aragon was the culmination of that. And then it just, it really felt like it was re regressed with this book, which was kind of disappointing. So I don't know, I kind of wish this had a happier ending, but I don't know, it's a, it's an honest review. I think I ended up giving it three and a half stars, which is not bad. Like anything over three for me is a good book. Anything under three, I would never, ever, ever read again. And I would never recommend to somebody. Over three is not bad, but it's not, if that makes sense. So I don't know, I wrote in my review that I hope there's another book because I'd still love to know the outcome of it. Obviously it didn't resolve everything at the end of the book. He might have killed the Bashel, but another speaker is going to rise after her and so it kind of feels like he's setting up for another book. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say basically. I enjoyed doing a reading vlog, I have to say. I know it wasn't super long. I was really worried it was going to be like an hour. I'm very glad it's not an hour or anything, but I enjoyed doing it. I felt like it helped keep everything fresh in my mind because I'd explain what would happen. So if you did like this kind of video, let me know. I know it's got spoilers, so it'll be very specific to people who've read the book or want a summary of the book without having read it themselves. And I could definitely do another one, but thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. And I will see you with another video very soon. I'm definitely getting back into the swing of things. I was very, very busy writing my own book. And so it took a while, but I'm finally back in the swing of things and I'm reading again and I'm listening to more audio books. And yeah, so there'll be more videos coming up very soon. And yeah, have a good rest of your day and I'll see you very soon. Bye.